Hi, I'm Ryan Westbrook, and you're watching Difference Makers, an original content series highlighting current student athletes who are taking their skills and traits home through sports to become difference makers in their corporate fields. Today, we're at Quay Tower in Brooklyn Heights, New York, with Chloe Chafin, a grad student that played basketball at Fordham University. Chloe, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Of course, absolutely. So tell us, how do you come from upstate New York to Fordham University to play basketball? So my journey kind of started really early on. So I was recruited in seventh grade and offered as a seventh grader by my head coach. And then I committed in eighth grade. And she was talking about kind of like finding your first love and like you always remember your first love. <laughs> um, and so that kind of stuck with me, I guess, because, you know, from seventh until you get to college, that's a long period of time. So. Um, yeah, we kind of just kept in communication, built that relationship, and it was kind of a no-brainer academically. Um, for sports, she built a great program, and so it was kind of just everything hit all the checks on my list, and I ended up in the Bronx, not too far from home, which is yes. good, too. Well, it sounds like you had a great relationship with your coach, and that sounds like it carried on for quite a long time. You know, what type of relationships do you have with your coaches now, and then how do you think that can help you in the corporate world? Um, I think it's all about being personable and finding those things that just connect you and common threads. Obviously, basketball being sport is something that connects and anybody's sport is something that connects you to people. But finding like personalities and bonding them together, um, you know, my coaches now are really awesome. And, you know, it's an open door kind of thing where you can really just, you know, have that trusting relationship, being comfortable, being able to talk. Um, and I think just finding your people and finding those little threads of connection are awesome. And that's something I really value, especially thinking about going into the workplace, like connecting with people is something I'm big on in general. And so I think going into the workforce, just finding those people, what's connecting you, um, how can you b build a bond based off of those things? You know, we all know that Fordham is not an easy academic school. It's a really tough academic school. So many great people have come from Fordham. How do you balance basketball? the sport, and then academics is together. Yeah. It's definitely just about time management, prioritizing things and have that free time. And, you know, maybe you want to take a nap after your long workout, but, you know, you don't have an assignment due. And so just making those little sacrifices that when you look back on it, it's not really that big of a deal. And, you know, just fitting things in when you can. And, you know, maybe I wanted to hang out with my friends with a hangout just turned into a study session instead. So it's, you know, you can kill two birds with one stone and, incorporate things and you just make it work honestly one of the things that you and i have in common is that we we have both torn our acl twice you had an additional injury your achilles as well tell us about that adversity and do just going through that type of process with the injury the recovery the re-injury all those different types of things yeah so coming into college you know everything's looking bright everything's looking great you have all of this promise and a career ahead of you and then my first ACL tear happened my freshman year. It was a shock. Uh, you know, I had to adjust. And I think that really taught me how to embrace my role, where I've never had to really impact off the court. And I've only known how to make an impact on the court physically through my presence playing sport. I really had to learn how to adjust and make impact in another way. And so I think it taught me to embrace my role and that things don't always look how you want them to. But that's okay. You can find and make a way. And so I think my mindset really was I could be better or I could be better, as cliche as that sounds. But like, how am I going to still come in every day? I got to find what's going to help me show up every day. And so if I'm, you know, upset about my situation, you know, my situation is what it is. And you talked about leadership on the court and off the court and your ability to affect the game, whether you're playing or not playing. How do you think that those roles and that understanding that you got in those situations can affect you and help you in the work world. Yeah, definitely. So injury itself is something, you know, a lot of athletes go through. And so I learned a lot about learning from others that came before me, but also being able to help those, um, you know, that go through similar situations and being able to just, you know, help them from my experience, things that I've learned, you know, about my mindset and how I was able to remain so positive because again, it's not a fun time, but you have to make the best of what your situation is. And well, so that, that's a good question. Yeah. How do you remain so positive? Because I remember when I tore my ACL in my senior year, I thought the, the world was over. Mm -hmm. uh, I did it again in college. I thought the world was over again. How did you, and what did you find inside of yourself 
that allowed you to remain that so positive? Well, it wasn't even so much inside myself. It's leaning on others and it's okay to lean on others and work through that. That's part of what it means to have teammates. Like you're there through the ups and the downs. And then also I was able to come back from my injury. A lot of players don't get that opportunity. They have injuries or they have circumstances that they're not able to come back. And You know, throughout your process in college and even in, you know, high school, I'm sure you've had difficult decisions, um, whether to come back a little bit sooner from injury, whether to go what school you want to go to. How do you go through those difficult decision processes? And how do you think that has helped and prepared you for the corporate world? Yeah, I think you have to think about the greater good of what's going on around you. It's not always what immediately is best for you. In terms of health, I feel like you should always prioritize yourself. But in terms of like difficult decisions that might not best benefit you, what's going to be the best for the team and going forward? And so looking into corporate world and that kind of thing too, like, you know, some decisions you have to make might not be the best personally for you. But when you look at the greater good of the results, that's what's really important sometimes. And so you got to kind of take a step back and Think of others before yourself sometimes. So so after you graduate, I mean, where do you want to do? What do you want to be? Where do you want to go? And have you already started going down that road already? Yeah, I think I just want to remain in sports and explore maybe the marketing side of sports. But I've just seen what it's done for my life and the impact it's made. And so I think my overarching goal is to make an impact through sports, through connecting, through making those relationships, building those relationships, and really just impacting through that way like it's not really the sport that's impacted me but the people I've met along the way or the connections I've formed or the education I was able to get as a byproduct of my experience and obviously you played at the highest level possible what do you think your biggest struggle in transitioning from sport to corporate America would be or was you know I think as an athlete you have so many people coming to you so many people want a piece of you and, you know, for a long period of time, you know, you, you accept a little bit of that, but then you're pushing people off because, you don't, you know, you're trying to do other things. Um, and then when you retire, no one's calling. No one's picking up the phone. I mean, so now you have to go the other way. Now I have to push and try to find other people to, to work with. Now I have to make the phone calls instead of the phone calls coming to me. And the corporate world is a little different than a locker room. In the locker room, you can say and do things and people understand you because you all have kind of gone through the same thing to get to that point. Um, but the corporate world is different. It's made up of a lot of different personalities, a lot of different people. Some people have not been in that same sports uh, world and they don't understand some of the, the joke games, some of the understandings that we have as athletes. And so it's a little bit different. The other thing that I think is um, that you have in the athlete is that you have a drive and you have this passion. And sometimes people don't understand that. Sometimes people say, this is just my job. Mm -hmm. This is what I do. And as athletes, we come and we go 100% all day, every day, and then we wake up and do it again. Um, and that's the beauty of the athlete mindset. That's the beauty of being an athlete. And not everyone understands that. And so sometimes in the corporate world, you have to temper that just a little bit so that you can make sure that your point is getting across, that people understand you, that you relate to other people. And that's part of being a leader. That's part of being a, a coworker as well. You know, Pepsi Zero Sugar is all about celebrating rookies as they see success in new roles and opportunities. What qualities do you possess that will make you successful in the corporate world, even as a rookie? I think accountability is the first thing that comes to my mind and being able to set a standard, hold myself, hold others to that standard because I know that's someplace that I can be. And so being able to demand that, uh, that of myself every day and then demand that of others because I know what I bring and that I know that you can bring that too. I think that's something I really hold close to myself. That's what the athlete mindset is all about, that I'm gonna do everything I can to be better tomorrow than I am today. That's some of the things that you learn um, in the athletic world. You, you mentioned some things today that I just, I love. You found your purpose and your passion. And sometimes it's not the first thing that you, not the first door that you knock on. You found that purpose and your passion and now you're pursuing that. Um, you found a way to lead, even though maybe you're not, you weren't on the court, but you were able to impact others, even if you weren't there. You're talking about your mindset and able to come back from literally season ending injuries three times. You have to be tough yeah. and that's a mental characteristic again, which is great communication, obviously huge. Um, and you know, the last thing that I think so many people overlook 
is the resiliency. The first quarter might not work out for me. The second quarter may not work out with me, but the third and fourth quarter, those are my quarters, right? And so you have the, certainly persevered through so many different things and you have the resiliency and the mindset that's gonna make you a great employer, uh, you know, a great employee, and all the things that you want in life are certainly right ahead of you. And I'm super excited to be here with you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Of course.